So I had an opportunity to see the third installment of Fear Street. It's time to talk about it. Let's go. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Club CXFM, brought to you by WeAreCritics.com, a place where we talk about movies, television, and pop culture. And if you're into that kind of thing, make sure you hit the subscribe key and that notification bell so you can be up to speed about everything that I talk about here. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Leah Z Zanayek, uh has tied a bow around this horrific trilogy that we have all grown to love. Uh, and I'm talking about R.L. Stein's Fear Street, technically Netflix's Fear Street, uh, based on R.L. Stein's books, but Fear Street, the trilogy, has come to an end. Uh, it's a bittersweet moment. And before I get into what did I actually think, because I had the opportunity, shout out to Netflix, I had the opportunity to check out Fear Street Part 3, uh, and I'm dropping this a little bit early so that if you choose to hear what I have to say, you may listen. And if you do not, and you wanna go watch this thing, feel free to stop, because I plan to get a little spoilers. Now that we are, we have come to the end of this, um, this horror trilogy, this teen horror trilogy, I feel as though it is fair game to just go right in. And like I said, if you don't want anything to be spoiled, uh, but it's a horror movie, I mean, come on. Uh, please feel free to hit stop come back and uh, drop your comments and your thoughts and let me know if I suck, if I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera, or if you agree. So, um, Fear Street 1666 takes place in the 17th century. Uh, I, I want to say maybe medieval England or something of that nature. Uh, and we have been promised that we would find out the origin of, in the beginning of Miss Sarah Fear and how all of this craziness has start started. And it stars Kiana Madeira. She's back in this, uh, Dina, but uh, as also playing uh, Sarah Fear as well. Benjamin Flores is in this again, playing her brother, uh, uh, Josh, but he also plays another character by the name of Henry. Trust me, this thing gets very confusing, guys. Uh, Olivia Scott Welch is back as well, who we all knew as Sarah, but now she is Hannah in this. Um, and then there's a couple of other familiar guys in it, like uh, the Sheriff Good is in this, but he's playing uh, a different Solomon Good, I think the name is, uh, in this in this uh, this version. Now, let's get right into it because. I just, 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 just stopped watching. I just finished it. And um, they let me down. I'm, I'm just going to be straight up. They let me down. But then they, but then they picked me back up. And we do get that solid origin story that they promised us. We get a, a very detailed and lengthy origin story. Probably longer than we needed to get. Uh, and I'm not lying and I'm not exaggerating when I tell you this. This is probably the longest one. I believe it was an hour and 53 minutes. And an hour of this movie is the origin. Straight out. Like, and although it's informative, it's very drawn out. Like, I don't think it needed to go as long as it went for them to give us the information that it gave us. Um, because I know a lot of people were already on the fence about the fact that this thing takes place in 1666. So they were like, you know, it's, you know, it's not really an era that I really care to watch horror in. I'm more, you know, I'm more into the 1994 or the 1978, or maybe even in the eighties. You know what I mean? I, I totally relate with that. Um, so seeing 1666 was kind of like already like, a, uh, let's see what they do. And they give you a lot of that. This movie is a lot of that, but uh, we get to see how Sarah Fair becomes, you know, how this curse comes about. We get little information about key players that we've already seen in the past and how, you know, they play a part in this thing. Um, and then you see that there are some descendants. I, I had a, I had a, uh, uh, an idea that I thought that 
probably like Dina or someone else was probably like a descendant of Sarah Fear, but that wasn't the case. But there are some descendants uh, in this, and I'm not gonna spoil that for you, but yes, there are some descendants uh, who, uh, you get the gist of what I'm saying. The part where it it, uh, it picks up, like I said, it's already it's like an hour in. Once things are figured out, because the beginning of the movie picks up right where the last one ended, and if you guys remember the last one, uh, it shows Dina touching the corpse, and then she gets flashed back into 1666, and that's where the story begins. So once things are caught up to speed, we then get flashed forward into uh, present, well not present time, but 1994 all over again. And then they hit us with a big bam, 1994 part two. That's where the, 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 the rest of the movie takes place. So with that being said, the third act in great fashion of 1994 is probably the best part of this movie so you have an hour of of just draggy uh backstory uh it tends to get a little intense in some places but overall the characters are not that interesting uh everyone just seems like they're playing uh playing acting uh, it feels very high school playish uh some of the accents aren't like on point um it's just, it is what it is. It goes back to that whole horror Nickelodeon movie. Remember before I said, in my other video, I said 1994 felt like it was a rated R Nickelodeon movie. And then, you know, when you go to this one, it goes, it kind of goes back there. It goes exactly right back to where it started uh, in, in tone wise. But when it flashes forward to 1994, uh, the wittiness, the originality comes back, uh, the, 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 the kill count is kind of weak in this. I'm not even going to lie, guys. The kill count is very weak in this. Um, yeah. Nah, it, I mean, it, it gives it, it gives you, like, the hopes of, like, uh, you know, you're just going to be attached to these characters. Like, you're going to have a vibe with these characters already by now. And now you just kind of just are on the edge of your seat hoping what's going to happen. But that's... It really wasn't the case for me. Like... I was invested because I cared enough to want to know and, and stick around and see what was going to happen. But there is some there are some cool things that happen, some wittiness, the final act, the third act, uh, and and even the twist. The twist. Let me tell you about the twist, though. And I'm not going to spoil the twist. Don't worry, I'm not going to spoil the twist. But I will tell you that is very lacking. It ha by the time it happens, you're like. All right, I didn't need an hour of this to get to that. It would have been better to just kind of just bring that up on us and then explain. But no, they kind of give you the backstory, explain, and then you know you're already expecting the, the ending. That I don't, I really don't know how to explain that, but it the the the, the twist was not. I don't know. Just enough. It wasn't. It didn't. It didn't wow me. I should say it didn't wow me. But I stuck around because you know I like this kind of genre. This one doesn't really feel horror. It really feels suspense. Uh, suspense thriller. Who done it? Uh, very on the nose of what a trilogy is. When you kind of think that it was one thing the whole time, and then by the time you get to the third act in the third movie, uh, everything you thought gets blown up in your face, and you're like, "Whoa, what the fuck?" Um, but that you don't really get the what the fuck. You just kind of you just kind of go with it. Um, uh, I yeah, man. I just I wasn't was I let down? Yeah, I was let down. But then I was picked back up. Like the third act in this movie is is it's rich. It's just like the 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 1994. Um, just just like it just feels like it it, it needed to end. Like they were like, well, all right, we got to wrap this thing up. Let's end it. And uh, then there's like a post credit scene as well at the end of it. So got to stick around for that. Nothing too crazy, but just a, a little bit of hope. Uh, and I kind of hope that what I saw uh, comes to fruition. You know what I mean? I just, I hope that it, 
it's, it stays in play. But it's really quick. It's nothing crazy, no characters or anything like that, but it happens. So stick around for the post credit scene. Uh, guys, Fear Street Part 3, 1666, available on Netflix this Friday. Uh, by the time you see that, well, I'm just going to drop it the day before, but by the time you see this, probably will already be running. So guys, make sure you check it out on Netflix. Uh, guys, you got to let me know. After you see this, you can even let me know now if you're excited to see this, but I need to know after you see this, which one of these was your favorite? I already tell you, mine was part two. Part two by far is the best one. It doesn't even need the beginning. It doesn't even need the end. It could be a standalone movie on its own. But I want to know what you people, what all you guys, girls, what you guys and girls think about the overall trilogy. Um, I need to know because it's all about what you think. It's not about what I think. Again, like, comment, share. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, and for more movie news, television news, pop culture, and our podcast, Critics Talk, you guys make sure you check out wearecritics.com. And I will talk to you all later.